Hi, Anish. How are you? Good, Michelle. How are you doing this? Time? I'm do doing very well. Thank you. So, Anish, you sent me um, a, a link to a paper um, that must have triggered you, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, why would you send it? Uh, a fairly, uh, you know, a small paper uh, in JAMA Internal Medicine. So, I will summarize it briefly. And then you can tell me what, uh, you know, tell us yeah. what, the, what triggered you about this paper. So, this is a paper. We'll have it linked. Uh, uh, in the notes uh, below the video, uh, pharmaceutical industry payments and oncologist selection of targeted cancer therapies in Medicare beneficiaries by Mitchell uh, et al. Uh, just came out. And um, so this is one more of, of um, uh, you know, in a series of studies that have come out looking at the influence <coughs> that uh, the payments, the that physicians get either in the form of um, sandwiches or lunches or bonbons or, you know, more, perhaps more substantial research, research grants, um, the, 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 uh, the impact that this may have on prescribing practices. So there are two databases that they've used. There's the uh, Sunshine Act database that uh, logs uh, every single um, payment that uh, physicians get, whether it's in the form of, uh, uh, in-kind meals and gifts or whatnot, or whether it's actual money. Um, and then there's another database from the Medicare uh, Part D um, that actually looks at prescriber, um, you know, how individual prescriber fill prescriptions. Uh, I wasn't actually aware of that database. So they took those databases and they looked at five um, different drugs uh, expensive drugs, oncology drugs, expensive drugs used in a couple of uh, different conditions, whether it's, uh, uh, I think, renal cell uh, carcinoma or some other uh, condition. I forgot which, but under these two conditions. And then they, 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 they looked at payment to doctors and if they tried to see if there was an association between receiving a payment from a manufacturer and prescribing more. And... Um, uh, surprise, surprise, they, they do find that um, receiving a payment is associated with increased odds of uh, prescribing more uh, compared to not receiving any payments, um, uh, whether it's, you know, launches or research payments. Um, and the odds ratio can go as high as, as two. So you, you may be twice as likely to prescribe a certain drug if you receive the payment from a pharmaceutical um, as opposed to not having received any payment. And I don't want to get into the statistics or the technicalities of, of the paper. Um, I'll take it at face value that it's a great paper, no, no statistical flaws, perfect. But maybe you can tell me if there are any flaws or you can tell me what triggered you. Or maybe you think it's a great paper and, uh, and nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so I mean, there, there's been a raft of these papers that have come in coming out for a while that have kind of established a foundation, uh, established something as, uh, one thing as foundation, that is that if you pay physicians uh, in whatever way, whether you give them pens or whether you give them lunches or whatever it is, there is an association with increasing um, prescriptions of whatever it is that they're being influenced to. So, um, so that, and, and I, I don't know, I guess every six months, like somebody else like rolls out another paper uh, showing that. Um, and so it, it shouldn't be surprising at this point, but the only, the difference here is, is that I recently became a speaker for a pharmaceutical company. Congratulations, you're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, but the, it's, it, it's always, I've always looked kind of um, uh, askance at this, at, at the causal inference that is always attempted to be made between drug lunches or pens and how much physicians prescribe. While, well, I'm sure that there's some amount of influence that is being brought to bear because we're humans on just being exposed to whatever branded product and that there, I'm sure there's some uptick in what we may or may not be doing. Um, I, I can think of beta blockers, you know, where, you know, why is it, I've always wondered <laughs> at a certain, the certain physicians, like, why are they, why are they writing for this particular drug much more than that one? And the, you know, again, in, within the same class. And that one happens to be branded. There happens to be lots of pharmaceutical reps that are running around with that particular drug. So I'm sure there's some linkage between 
pharmaceutical uh, company expenditures on certain drugs and PR and what physicians do. Um, but I don't know. I, the question is quantifying the effect of it, I think. And that's, that's what I think is, should be somewhat relevant. Meaning, um, is that why, is that the root of all our problems? Like, is that why we um, uh, have a, a overprescription of certain drugs? Is that why we have overdiagnosis or whatever over uh, supply of things that physicians are, are doing? And, I, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not so clear about that. So, you know, for instance, in my short little experience with um, becoming a speaker for the first time, I haven't actually done my first talk. I've just gone through the, the training. Um, it's, it's that, you know, it, it, it's, it's more that it seems to be that you're more sought out because you are prescribing more of drug X. So in this particular case is drug, I was prescribing a fair, you know, I was, I was, I've been prescribing a reasonable amount of one of the SGL2 class inhibitors to my diabetic patients. Uh, and, uh, and, and, that, and then, you know, three, four, five, six months later, because they have all that data, they've bought it somehow. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I was, I was approached and said, hey, would you want to speak for it since you seem to be relatively comfortable uh, using uh, uh, the drug and you're a good speaker, et cetera, et cetera. And then you go through the whole speaking things, uh, you go through the whole speaking uh, 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 training and whatnot, and and then you're, you know, you're essentially, you're off to the races. But, you know, obviously, if you ran this, if I was in this pool, I'm, I'm not, this is a specific oncology pool or whatnot. But if you ran this pool with, with, with people like me in it, you would see an association between, hey, there's a lot of, there's payments going to this guy, and there's a lot of uh, a drug prescribed by this guy. But, but, you know, this is, this is the classic, you know, correlation doesn't necessarily uh, make a, a causation. So, um, so that's okay. that was a particularly uh, uh, that it, was it hit home. It hit home. Your integrity is being questioned. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or my, it will be questioned. It will be questioned. Right. It will be questioned. Or your uh, yeah. What were your thoughts? Well, uh, my thoughts are um, actually so. Yes, you're correct. Um, you know, correlation is not causation. Causation. Uh, first of all, uh, you're right. They may be seeking out people who are already prescribing more. The pharmaceutical companies and and give more money to to those doctors um, because they already have a champion, so to speak, and it's easier to, uh, to use a, a champion. Number two, uh, I think perhaps more importantly, is that it may be the right thing to do to prescribe this <laughs> medication, yeah. right? It could very right. well be the right thing to do, so we don't know anything about outcomes uh, and so forth. Um, however, I actually, I personally, um, um, uh, I think it's a problem. Uh, I think it's a problem, and I'm not trying to to seem holier than thou and so forth. But I think doctors should not um, uh, appear, even if they may not be uh, effectively, um, you know, doing something bad or having conflicts of interest or or whatnot. I don't think doctors should appear um, as potentially have a, conf a conflict of interest. And I think it goes even as far down as the simple bonbon and I, as much as possible, I think doctors should avoid um, eating lunches from, I mean, I, I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm, you may be surprised, but I'm more uh, radical than, than, uh, than I think most, uh, most people would assume in that, in that regard. Um, even if there's no influence, I think there, there's a potential for, for appearing um, uh, as biased, which for the patient is not a good thing. Um, uh, in general, uh, appearances are important, uh, even if they're not the end-all, be-all of things. You know, you, you, wear, you wear a clean shirt when you go to, you know, you meet your patients. Sometimes maybe you wear a tie or something. It's because, you know, you want the appearance to, to convey something. It has, it has importance in, in the therapy. So if you're, if you're always having, uh, you know, drug reps in your office and uh, they bring lunch to your staff and, and I don't know if, if you do that or not, but or there, there can be an appearance, and I think that's not a good thing. Uh, so I think it should be discouraged. On the other hand, on the point that you made um, at the beginning, whether this is really the cause of, um, of all our problems and of the expenses, I think it's way overblown. I think you're correct. I think um, it's way overblown. Uh, overblown. And, and number two, if 
if it's a problem, well, why don't we stop subsidizing? I mean, why doesn't government sub subsidizing pharma instead of, you know, preventing doctors from eating bonbons and, and, and uh, chick Chick-fil-A sandwiches from pharma or getting payments? There are millions and billions more that are being, uh, in, in ways, pharma is being subsidized by the government. You know, we, we subsidize research, right? Which PharmaGen then cherry picks afterwards. So there's a whole bunch of money being spent on, uh, we talked about that earlier in an earlier episode, but we subsidize research. We subsidize pharma by having Medicare Part D pay for drugs, right? So that's a huge subsidy for pharma. So, so we do a lot of, um, uh, of subsidies, but you know, why don't we just uh, give up on these? We, have, we give patents, right? So patent law is a huge subsidy for pharma. And, and for the yeah. private sector in general. We, yes. uh, we ban imports of cheaper substitutes, right? So why don't we open the markets and prevent? So, so you know, why focus on this really trivial uh, aspect of things when we're subsidizing pharma in, in much more important ways? And, and so in my yeah. mind, that's completely missing the boat. Yeah, no, no, I, I, you are completely right. I think uh, it, it, the whole thing is somewhat silly in terms of uh, overblowing how much of a problem this is in terms of breaking uh, healthcare or whatnot. I mean, uh, not to mention that, again, I can't, it must be mentioned that, you know, uh, I think in 2015, which is the highest, uh, I think the, 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 the highest watermark in terms of how much we spent as a nation on pharma, it was, uh, you know, the total amount in terms of all the healthcare that was spent was 12%. You know, the amount we spend right. um, on uh, on hospitals is something like thirty three percent. You know, one out of three dollars out of that three trillion dollar mark. So, so you're, I think you're absolutely right. It would be it would be a, it would be to everyone's benefit if we talked about uh, where the real costs uh, uh, lie. Not 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 even just speaking about pharma. I mean, I would push back just uh, slightly and say that you know if the nation is going to spend twelve percent of its wealth on uh, on uh, uh, prescription drugs and once every 10 years we get something that's game changing like a cure for hepatitis C or uh, you know uh, highly active retrovirals that uh, essentially have cured or you know have made HIV AIDS livable you know that's that's something that uh, folks like me are certainly will, will, will live with you know you, you can look at a lot of other places in the healthcare economy and uh, wonder what exactly you're getting for what we're spending there so if anything the pharmaceutical companies may be um, uh, the the least the, the most immune to uh, uh, those type of attacks about uh, perhaps rents. but but you don't even know if uh, those discoveries might have gotten you know uh, even you know come 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 even faster uh, without these subsidies and without the spenders you know the spending spending is not necessarily correlated with right with, uh, with new discoveries. No, that, that's that's true. That's true. I I I'll also say that it's a, that's a yeah that's a really uh, yeah it's a yeah no you're you're correct. Tangents, um, but it's, it's a, yeah the but but the other you know I, I don't I think we're 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 approaching the small it's a much smaller point which gets all the ink this in terms of pharma <laughs> physician interaction. <laughs> well, but returning to that much smaller point, see right. you, you you think broad I think small. <laughs> <laughs> but returning to that smaller point, I think. You know, it's we we are get it going about it all wrong. Like, yes. let let the pharmaceutical guys uh, have whatever opinions they are told to have by their medical folks, and and let them come and interact with the medical community, and then we should push back. Uh, you know, if, if it's not correct, meaning we need to teach uh, residents, fellows, attendings, us. You know, uh, we need, all, all of us, and, and we need to teach critical thinking more. We need to teach. Uh, disc uh, discussions more, uh, you know, so that we can uh, reason through these things. Because the idea that we uh, s we we stop all interactions um, and that somehow we are immune to bad thoughts or something makes no sense. Meaning there are lots and lots of folks that are trying to influence us uh, in whatever guise. It would be nice if we had some basis and some practice in pushing back. So no, um, I, I've never. Yeah. It's true because we don't. You know, we get a, a gazillion lunches and we're not, you know, prescribing uh, equally or in proportion to the quality of lunch or, yeah. or you know, all that stuff. No, you're absolutely right. Um, but but it, go ahead. No, I'll just, I'll just point, I, I just, the other thing to point out, I'm going to share this screen here in terms of this, you know, this, in terms of how strong this uh, data is. I've already talked about um, 
already talked about. Can you see that there? Yep. You know, mm -hmm. certainly correlation not being causation um, and that being a major issue. Um, but but look at these numbers here. You know, this is the general payments. These are research payments. And the light blue is received payment from a man manufacturer of that drug. And the uh, dark blue did not receive payment. And you see, you know, in almost all of them, the light blue is higher. And this is what they're, this is the basis for saying that if you received a payment, you know, you are much more likely to prescribe the drug. But look at these differences here, right? I mean, you're talking, you know, this, 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 <laughs> you're talking about some very small, uh, uh, small differences. I mean, if this is pharma's big uh, attempt to influence us, um, I think they're failing miserably. They should, <laughs> they, should <laughs> they should look to spend their dollars elsewhere. So, uh, you know, I think, I think this is this goes along this goes along with this constant like physician as whipping boy that uh, that some corners of the correct world correct be, you know and so it's on like, the other hand not not whipping enough as far as I'm concerned you yeah. know I want to do something um, yeah. I want to read the first sentence of the paragraph yeah I mean, the, the first uh, right the first paragraph of the paper and then read to you an alternative um, paragraph that I would like to see. <laughs> uh, you know, in the pages of uh, JAMA yeah. or JAMA yeah. Internal Medicine, but I never see. So yeah. uh, as it is right now, this is the first paragraph. Physicians and teaching hospitals in the United States receive approximately $7 billion from the pharmaceutical industry annually. These payments right. have been associated with higher costs, brand name pharmaceutical prescribing. Whether industry payments are associated with physician treatment choice in oncology is uncertain, right? So we, we don't know, equipoise. Right. And so right. we're going to... Uh, we examine the association between oncologists' receipt of payments from the pharmaceutical manufacturers and drug selection in two situations where there are multiple treatment options. Okay, right. so that's the first paragraph. This is one, a paragraph that I would like to see uh, <laughs> that I never see in medical journals. Yeah, uh, physicians receive seven hundred billion dollars from the government and insurance industry annually. <laughs> These payments have been associated with high cost, overutilization over treatment and decreased quality. Whether government and insurance industry payments are associated with physician treatment choice is uncertain. We <laughs> examine the association between physician receipt of payment from the government and insurance with, with duration of office visits, quality of care as perceived by the patient and with utilization of healthcare resources. The control group was composed of physicians who do not ac accept government and insurance payments for services, right? <laughs> so you think we'll ever see a, a, a paper like this in, in JAMA, Internal Medicine? Uh, I Probably think, Michelle, not. you have, yeah, no, I, I right. think you should work on it, Michelle. Probably not, but that's, that's because of course, everybody, um, present company accepted, accepts insurance payments and government payments. And that reminds me that there's something that, uh, uh, you know, the epidemiologist Jeffrey Rose quipped that <clears throat> if everybody in the country smoked cigarettes, we would think that lung cancer is a genetic disease, right? Because you have epidemiologically, you have no way of uh, having a control group. And that's the, how we are here with you know, insurance payment. There's no yeah. control group because everybody's sort of um, uh, corrupted as far as I'm concerned, yeah. corrupted by this dependence on uh, insurance payment, whether it's from the government or from, from private insurance and whatnot. And that's a, a, a huge subsidy and a huge mistake and, uh, and, and the cost of the cost. But anyway, I wanted to make that. Yeah. No, no, that, 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 that's the, you're right. That is an incredibly important point. I mean, very few people are able to be as principled as, as you are in terms of <laughs> not accepting third party payments. I, I, I wish, I wish I could say the same for myself. That is not the case. I have a case. very understanding. Why. I, I'm, I'm simply trying to increase the amount of third parties that pay me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. If you, you know, if you can diversify, you know, sort of uh, equally make them compete. Uh, 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 that's fine. Yeah. You, you know, I don't want to, uh, you and, and most everybody else, I think many, many, many doctors are trying their best to, to maintain their integrity and to do what's right for the patient. But you know, if, uh, if we're going to say that there's a conflict of interest, this is this yeah. by far. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't, don't feel bad. Don't let us off the hook too easily. <laughs> you're, 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 you're absolutely right. Like all of us who are uh, on the, uh, on, on the, on the dole from the some third train. party payer. We, we, yeah. Most of us just have no idea how we would be, how we would be practicing if that was not the case. So, so, uh, but yeah, no, good, great, great point. It's a good, good, good place right. to uh, end. Enough whipping. Yes, enough whipping of me. <laughs> All right, Anish. All right, sir. Nice stuff talking. Bye. Yep, same here.